We are aware of what this week is and of course have seen a lot of interesting April Fool's posts, but this week's news has been rather interesting despite the usual pranks. The JRPG One Piece Odyssey has officially been confirmed, heading to PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One and PC in 2022. This isn't the first time we've heard of the One Piece game as it was rumoured back in July of last year when Bandai filed a trademark for One Piece Odyssey. In a video interview with main producer Katsuaki Suzuki, they shared that the game would be an epic adventure to experience the One Piece world. Japanese manga artist and creator of the One Piece series, Ichihiro Oda, has also designed the new characters and monsters that will be in the game himself. The JRPG will contain everything you'd expect from the full-fledged RPG experience, including dungeons, quests, puzzles, and more. Suzuki has also mentioned this is the most meticulously worked on game for One Piece for such an extensive period of time. Unfortunately, some bad news for Zelda fans, as the sequel to Breath of the World has now been pushed to spring 2023. Originally supposed to release this year, the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild has now been delayed. In the announcement this week, the video footage shows Link holding the Master Sword or what appears to be the sword but slightly damaged, with it still glowing. What happened to the sword? This could be hinting at what will happen in the sequel. The delay is to give the already hard at work development team more time to make this game's experience something special. We can't wait to see what new mechanics, regions and more to be revealed closer to the release date, but it looks like it will be some time. Announced this week, coming in June 2022, Sony is introducing a tiered approach to the PlayStation Plus service. PlayStation Plus as a subscription service will now be split into three distinct tiers, namely these will be PlayStation Plus Essential, Extra and Premium. All of the current features that are in PlayStation Plus will be available in the Essential tier. This means that benefits such as two free games, discounts, cloud storage and multiplayer access will still be in the most basic services. The Extra tier will have all the benefits of Essential. However, this will also grant subscribers access to over 400 of the biggest hits on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 consoles. Titles will range from first party Sony exclusives to other third party editions. Games will be available for streaming only. Premium tier will gain all the perks from the Essential and Extra, but will also come with an additional 340 games. However, these additional games will come in the form of downloadable original PlayStation, PlayStation 2 and PSP games. Unfortunately, PS3 games will be limited to cloud streaming. Essential, Extra and Premium tiers will be priced at $9.99 USD, $14.99 and $17.99 per month respectively. If you want more details on PlayStation Plus's new tier system or any news mentioned in this video, the link is in the description. A recent quarterly update revealed more details surrounding Diablo 4's environments as well as locations. We'll be visiting a total of 5 different regions in Diablo 4, along with hundreds of dungeons. Depending on how large a region is, we should be exploring Sanctuary for quite some time. Hopefully one region would be more or less the same as one full act. In order to create a cohesive world of Sanctuary in Diablo 4, the team is taking to heart two specific ideologies, namely these are Old Masters and Return to Darkness. As always, the world is terrifying and filled with demons and the occult. Players in Sanctuary will be able to seamlessly roam in the gigantic world. Revealed in the update includes locations such as Skos Glen Coast, a dreary beach full of death and seaweed, Orbe Monastery, a set of ruins hidden within the dry steppes, and Koryvashed, a refuge for travellers. If you want even more Diablo 4, be sure to check out our Diablo 4 wiki for all the latest info. It has been announced that E3 2022 won't be taking place this year in digital or physical form as it is officially cancelled. The news broke when emails were sent to partners from the Electronic Software Association who released a statement confirming that the show was cancelled, but will return to Los Angeles for a live show next year in 2023. The statement goes on to explain that they are putting their efforts into a show next year promising an all new format and interactive experience. But we won't be without gaming news as Summer Game Fest is set to be on track for June as Jeff Keighley confirms the event will be going ahead as usual with partners, Amazon Games, Blizzard, Capcom, Epic Games, Bandai Namco, Square Enix, Warner Brothers and much more according to the official website. What do you think of this news of E3 being cancelled? What would you like to see from the new and improved E3 for next year? Let us know in the comments below. Developer Motion Twin has released a new free update for Dead Cells called Break the Bank. The update adds a slew of content including a new optional biome to explore called The Bank. Will you manage to break the bank? Well, in order to unlock the bank, players will need to have reached at least the Hand of the King once, 
once you've done this, it will start appearing the next time you cross the area prisoners' quarters. In order to get to the bank, players will need to encounter a chest, a big one that glows slightly. If you choose to enter it, you will enter the area, and if you don't, you will lose the opportunity for that run to enter the bank as it won't appear again. It will be randomly appearing in your run, replacing whichever following biomes you have in your run if you decide to enter it. Players can pick up new weapons and mutations with an added risky effect. The bank will actually take away one scroll of the considered best biome of the following ones that you were supposed to take, but will also offer a guaranteed cursed chest. As for the future of Dead Cells in terms of updates, it isn't quite over yet. Motion Twin have been doing an amazing job not only releasing premium content but adding additional free updates, tweaking gameplay here and there. The team shares in the post that there will be at least one more year of downloadable content and free updates, so they look to keep supporting Dead Cells moving forward, but they have already started a new project. Dead Cells is currently available to play on PC, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, iOS and Android. The latest free update, Break the Bank, is now available. This week a melding of comic book heroes and Diablo inspired combat was revealed with the upcoming action RPG Superfuse. Superfuse follows your customized superheroes as they do battle with the forces of evil. As with any successful ARPG, Superfuse will let players do battle with dozens of creatures and other cosmic threats. Humanity was on the brink of extinction and was forced to abandon Earth. However, this came at a cost since it was the wealthy elite class that was funded the majority of this operation. In turn, the rich became the overlords over the rest of the humanity and even went as far as becoming living gods. As the story begins, a new threat is looming over the horizon. Labelled the corruption, the wealthy elite has tasked regular people with becoming enforcers and granted amazing superpowers. Superfuse will feature five character classes for players to choose from. Players can choose from their favourite superpowers and fuse others into them, creating a unique skill whose sum is greater than its parts. Superfuse so far doesn't have a release date but looks to have an interesting premise for this action RPG. Hyperlight Breaker was announced as the sequel to Hyperlight Drifter, a fully 3D third person with roguelike elements and co-op. Sequel to the beloved Hyperlight Drifter, Breaker takes things to a new perspective. In Breaker, it will shy away from the top-down 16-bit aesthetic. Instead, a new shiny 3D third-person game takes its place. You can see though that the newest game still feels familiar to the first as it still has the bright colours and aesthetics of the first title. Breaker will have some fancy new moves at his disposal. Wall dashes, a nifty hoverboard and a Zelda-like glider are just some of the tools that players will have to explore the land. Players will explore the Overgrove, a completely new area that's still set in the world of Hyperlight. The world is ever-changing with massive open biomes and deep labyrinths. The game's Steam page also mentioned that players can discover and unlock a wide arsenal of weapons and items to create the perfect build for every run, which could mean some randomised elements between runs. Hyperlight Breaker is set to release in Spring 2023 in Early Access. Well that's it for the week in the wikis, please join us again next week for yet another great week of gaming. Remember to check out our VIP program for some exclusive supporter benefits and budding writers should take advantage of our Become an Author initiative. Thanks again for being part of this great community. Keep checking in with us with news, reviews, YouTube streams and vids and general wiki goodness.